in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. All right, Vikings Vent Line, the offseason edition. It is back. It's back after a good, what, four month or so. St. Cloud State math year hiatus. Declan Goff here to uh, take you through an edition of Vikings Event Line. And if you're kind of new to the offseason edition, maybe you discovered us during the regular season where it was Mackie Judd and myself, and we would welcome on as many Vikings fans as possible uh, after immediately right after the game. That show still lives on in a different alliteration. Basically, it, it's it's offseason event line. So I still bring on Vikings fans. I pick and choose a couple fans each week to come on with me to talk about the season, talk about the NFL draft, expectations, upcoming things. So this is still your show. We like to say Vikings event line is a show for the Vikings fan. We give you guys a space to vent about anything positive, negative, optimistic. This is your guys' show. So if this is something that you'd like to be a part of, and whether you're a recurring guest, because I have been on, said, had, had some uh, recurring guests on before, or if you're brand new to Purple Daily, or maybe you've never joined Ventline even, um, so this is a safe spot for you. So if you'd like to join Vikings Ventline in a future episode, hit me up. It's vikingsventline at gmail.com. It's the same link we use uh, throughout the regular season, too. I kind of monitor that throughout the week. So if, if this is a show you'd like to be involved with, hit me up. It's vikingsventline at gmail.com. Purple Daily also presented by our friends at Quick Trip. So go check out a Quick Trip uh, for all your gasoline, uh, all your great chicken and donut needs. I got a pack, pack of glazers in here right now. So uh, shout out to Quick Trip for sponsoring us here at Purple Daily. Got our guys uh, Anthony and Ryan here about to jump on with me on Vikings Vent Line to talk about the regular season that obviously transpired for the Vikings. Let's talk a little bit about what to expect going forward uh, for the Purple 2. So uh, really excited to talk to them. And again, if you want to get on the show, this is your guys' show. We are still here every Sunday on Purple Daily with myself. So hit me up. It's Vikings Vent Line at gmail.com. All right, let's get our guys in here. Let's get Anthony in here. Let's get Ryan in here. Uh, you guys are joining Ventline for the first time. Anthony, you and I were talking off mic. You're in New York, right? Are you in New York, New Jersey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. New York. Okay, New York. And you've been a fan of the Vikings, you told me, since 2007. Is that correct? The year Adrian Peterson was drafted, yes, sir. Okay, nice. Very nice, man. Uh, Ryan, how about you, man? Uh, what, what was your kind of earliest Vikings memory and also where are you, uh, where are you residing from? Uh, so I'm located about 30 miles north of Brainerd, so Minnesota boy, homegrown. Um, my Vikings journey has been a little bit of a complicated one. <laughs> so like I grew up a, a diehard fan and then the 98 season just totally broke my heart. So I strayed away for a little bit. And then of course I got reeled back in with the Brett Favre, the 09 season and it's just been full glow, full go ever since. Yeah, man. Everyone has the story of either 98, obviously 09, 2017, um, that's that's what I was teasing with Mackie and Judd I think earlier this week that in like five ten years we're gonna get some people on vent line or people that are watching the Purple Daily who said they got hooked because of what happened in 2017 the highs and all the lows so every ten years there's a new iteration or generation of Vikings fans that come in here and are absolutely tormented by the Vikings uh, so boys let, let's get into this <laughs> stuff here so uh, I got some questions to ask you guys excited to talk with you about it um, obviously NFL playoffs are finally here but I would love to know and uh, Anthony I'm gonna start with you here. Would the Vikings be in the playoffs right now if Kirk Cousins hadn't torn his Achilles? I mean, they're starting to turn their season around to a degree. Obviously, you know, it's not a complete guarantee that they were going to win every game in North. Should I think Vikings fan assume they would have went undefeated? But if Kirk hadn't gotten injured, are the Vikings in the playoffs on Super Wildcard Weekend? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, they were only, what, really about a game out regardless of, I mean, with him being hurt anyways. So you'd have to think that whether it's that Bengals game, maybe that Broncos game, um, you know, having Kirk starting, you probably figure out a way to scrape one of those out. Um, and then I kind of like your chances to at least bare minimum be a seventh seed in the playoffs. Um, I do think similar to kind of what you guys are going off of, it might be a blessing in disguise down the road that they didn't make it. Um, you know, I'm not really sure how much I trust the defense this year, to be honest, in its entirety, when you look at the full uh, slate of the whole season um, and, you know, are we beating the 49ers in San Francisco this year? Um, you know, I, w I won't say anything negative, but I think we can just let that be where it is. So, yeah, that's kind of my my take on that. Yeah, I, some of those are like just disastrous losses they had, obviously, after the kind of sugar high that was Josh Dobbs. Like the Bears one, I think, for me, is the one that stands out the most, like just oh, at home. And God. look, the Bears, 
Bears turn things around to a degree, but at the same time, like when you only score, yeah, the seven points and you let the Bears then march down the field with ease in the last drive, like that one was the one that I think I look back at a lot that was just a sucker punch and kind of just tilted the season uh, in in the negative way. Ryan, how about you, man? Do you think Kirk Cousins and the Vikings are in the playoffs if he hadn't gotten injured against Green Bay? Yeah, most definitely. Um, Kirk was really starting to turn things around. He's starting to ball a little bit there. And uh, I, I definitely think they would have beat the Bears for sure. You probably don't lose that game in Denver. Probably don't lose to Cincinnati. I mean, they would have had a legitimate shot to uh, to fight the Lions for the North. I know, man. I think that's kind of the tough one to swallow where, you know, the, yes, they were a game out and, you know, they can scratch their claw. There's the extra wild card team. But, I mean, the Vikings still had like – they had just had to win out over the last three games to basically control the division fate because he had the Lions twice over the last uh, three weeks of the season. And, I mean, yeah, ifs, and ands, and buts, and the Vikings weren't going to run the table either, but it's just it, – it's it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. You, Declan, you mentioned that game against the Bears and I that, that last drive kind of being the flipper for you. I give you credit for making it that far to be the flipper. For me, I just – it was one of those things, you know, when you feel in your gut the season just – you know, taking the spin after the sugar high. You mentioned that was Josh Dobbs. The play for me that did it was an, on Sunday night in Denver uh, when they ran that toss from TJ Hawkinson to Josh Dobbs. And, I mean, regardless, it absolutely probably should have been a penalty. Um, but I think that goes beyond the point of really the, the extent of really, you know, just the context of the situation. And for me, I just remember feeling in that moment, I was just like, one, they're not winning this game. And two, like, it's just I just felt like it was over, and I, I don't know. There was that play. I it won't. I wouldn't say it will haunt me forever because, like I said, I think it ended up being a good thing that they started to lose some games um, uh, for the big picture. But yeah, that that's one that 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 play. I just is it will always be engraved in my mind. And look, I love KLC getting creative with some play calling there, yes. but at the yeah. same time, yeah, not not maybe the place place to use that one. It was um, like his we'll, third week on the team, I think. You yeah. Know? And Dad, yeah, yeah. you have to know Denver is like headhunting. I mean, if Vikings fans know all about Sean Payton, everything about that, like it's even risk your quarterback who's been on such a great play. Like, and I like KOC too. It's just nothing about it made sense, and then it didn't work. And yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's uh, we'll get in some Kevin O'Connell stuff to you later on on here on Bentline. Um, but as they transition into the offseason, so the Vikings with the 11th pick in the draft, and we'll see how the draft board shakes out to a degree. Uh, uh, what are you guys looking at to do here in the draft? I guess, Anthony, are you looking for them to take the quarterback of the future? Do you want to see them trade up? Do you want to see them maybe take an edge rusher draft plans-wise? Wh wh where do you want to see this, uh, the Vikings do this year when they're on the clock at pick 11? Um, well, I want to preface anything I say with the fact that I do love Kirk Cousins. Um, he's been... I mean, I was in New Orleans when he won that game. It was probably the best day of my life. Um, and I, I, but I think with that being said, um, yeah, I, I'm going to do anything that it possibly takes for the Vikings to draft a quarterback. I will manifest destiny in any way possible um, to be PG and keep things appropriate. I did make a bet with my friend um, that if, uh, I really am trying to manifest Michael Penix Jr. I'll take anyone, but uh, Michael Penix Jr. would be great, I think. Um, and he said, if they, if the Vikings draft Michael Penix Jr., he will buy me a custom Penix Jr. jersey, but instead it will say Junior Penix, and the last letter will be flipped around. So I agree to wear that jersey if the Vikings draft him for every game day next year. Um, and I think that kind of gives you a sense of where I'm at. I love it, man. Yeah, that that Saints win was a lot of fun. I actually just saw like on on my Snapchat memories, like yeah, two or yeah. three days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had those <laughs> of, I had those too. Of watching the watching that whole thing unfold. So Dude, um, we were ten rows up behind the end zone, and after the game ended, the Saints security guards wouldn't let me and my girlfriend come down to the front of the row after everyone evac like everyone left to take a picture. They like forced us out, and we had Saints fans yelling from uh, like five rows above to like get out of people's way, and they were not even anywhere near us. You know, they kind of speak like alligators, you know, but whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll stop there. Sorry. No, dude, I love it. I love that. I love the disruption you were doing in the Superdome. That's that's sweet. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, how about you, man? Uh, draft wise, do you want to see the, the Vikings kind of fix things up a little bit immediately to put a bandaid over things? Are you looking at maybe moving on from Kirk to draft and a quarterback? Uh, what would you like to see the Vikings do in the draft this year? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Honestly, like Kirk's a great dude. Him and I in like real life would probably be best friends if we knew each other. Like 
we're both about that dad energy, that Cole's cash. Uh, he loves Lord of the Rings. I'm a huge rings nerd. But uh, when it comes down to it, dude, like he's he's just not that guy. He, he needs too many perfect things around him. And I, I just think after six years, one playoff win, it's like the experiment's over, dude. Like we have too many holes in this roster to just say, hey, let's bring Kirk back and we're going to roll. Um, personally, I'd like to see us get a guy like Jaden Daniels or if we can trade up and get Drake May. Um, I do like Penix. The The injury history scares me, but uh, if the Vikings decided like, hey, that's my guy too, I'm on board with it. But as far as our, our first round pick, I'm ready to move on, man. We got to get a QB of the future. Yeah, this is a this is a really quintessential like offseason for them. And, you know, I'll ask you guys here in just a bit about Kwesi and KOC's future. But, yeah, I mean, this it feels like you're just kind of running it back every year and the Vikings are never really bad enough, right, where they have shipwrecked things. And, you know, picking 11th, for God's sakes, is the highest they've picked in nine years. You know, they're typically between that, like, 15 to 22 spot. Um, so now they're at pick 11. There's holes in the roster from, obviously, future at quarterback, defense everywhere, basically, on defense that they have to fill. And it feels like it might be something that might take a, a little bit to kind of build overnight. But obviously, like you hit on a franchise quarterback, you know, that's kind of the roulette rule that you're spinning. And if you obviously hit hit the highest pop probability, I mean, that would be sweet. And it can fill up a lot of holes. And this team hasn't had a rookie quarterback that has ever really stepped in and be able to do that since Dante. So, yeah, I, I, this is a, a big offseason. We're excited to obviously talk about it. And, yeah, I was just kind of curious on where you guys looked at it. So, Penix Don't forget uh, about Christian well. Ponder, Declan. Don't forget about Christian Ponder. <laughs> right. He won us the division, okay? He did. <laughs> If he wasn't if he wasn't hurt in that for that playoff game that Joe Webb started, I mean, hey, who who knows? Okay, his first pass, remember his first pass was like that eighty yard touchdown off the off the play action boot. It was like only a ten yard pass. It ran the rest away. Let's just not forget about Christian Ponder. That's all I'm going to say. Dude, he, he played he played so well in that 2012 season over those last four games that his arm just broke, right? Like his arm just it broke. He he wasn't able to to keep up with a four game sample size of of playing complimentary football. I feel you. Um, Ryan, do you think that this is kind of a make or break year for Quasi and Kevin O'Connell? I mean, I don't know if you can maybe even loop them together, but obviously year one goes great. Year two, it's been it was a little clunky and whatnot, but do you think that this year, this draft, this offseason decisions and kind of what happens throughout the 2024 regular season, do you think that this is a make or break season for both for, for both Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Adopa Mensa? Yeah, I mean, in a way, I think it should be kind of like what you were hitting on yesterday in the episode, um, talking about how the Wilfs are like, we want championships, you know. So I, I think giving a guy three years is pretty reasonable. And when you look back at like the 20, 2022 draft class, it's not looking real good on Quasi. Like, especially when you look at like the scene pick and Andrew Booth Jr. Caleb Evans has had a few moments here and there. But I mean, you look at his drafting as a whole, the, the trade back. Like, I was so upset when we didn't just take Jamison Williams in that spot where we were at, at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Quasi for sure. Um, I'm not totally out on KOC. I'm I'm kind of leery because I felt like he took a step back this year compared to year one with like the in-game management, the bringing Garrett Bradbury back. I mean, I'm so sick of seeing that guy get forklifted into the stands um, between him and like Ed Ingram just and bringing back Madison on a contract. I mean, it's just, no running game. I just I got a lot of red flags when it comes to Kevin. I'm not totally out on him yet because I do think he did a lot of good things this year, especially with all the injuries. But uh, I do definitely think that uh, the seat should be warming up a little bit on both of those guys. Yeah, I think a lot of Vikings fans who definitely have questions about Kevin O'Connell, and I think there's some really crazy ones out there that he should be fired, which I you know is completely overreaction and premature. But there definitely seems to be yeah. more of a criticism tilted, obviously, towards Quasi, And that's probably because of that first draft and whatnot, more than it is on Kevin O'Connell. Uh, but how about you, Anthony? Do you, do you think that there's pressure on both of them here? Is one of them feeling more heat than the other? What do you think? Is this a pivotal offseason for them going forward? I, I think Ryan kind of hit the nail on the head, to be honest. Like, I would say that it shouldn't be, but I think that it can be. Um, you know, you saw some things, like you said, some red flags. I'll mention a couple other ones that I don't know if Ryan touched on. Forgive me if you did, Ryan. But um, some of the play calling, um, I mean, 
again, like I didn't even want to make the playoffs really at some, some point this year, but that game against the Bengals when they ran two QB sneaks with um, Brandon Powell, who I like to call Brandon Powell the owl, and I always send <laughs> owl gifts in my group chat whenever <laughs> gets his one you know three yard pass a game or whatever it is i like him but um when they went back to back with him pushing it, it really kind of made me it was like it was like um you know one of those like count, uh, card counting movies where all the numbers are in your head i was just reflecting on everything that's happened this year and if anything makes sense or what's the point or anything because it's just hard for me to believe you know someone would make a decision like that and i really really like kevin o'connell uh, I think he has the best culture I've probably ever seen on the Vikings in, you know, the 17 years or 16 years I've been a fan. Um, but yeah, like, like Ryan said, like it, it could be, I really hope it's not. Um, this year feels like the more of the heavy Kwesi side, just because the past few years they've had Kirk, they've had some assets, you know, to work with, to stay competitive, as they like to say, um, things like that. And now this year feels like the most pivotal uh, off season yet. So I feel like if he picks a few guys that don't pan out high, um, you know, things like that, then yeah, Quasi, I think a little more pressure, but Kevin O'Connell, I feel like should should be okay. I'd really like to think that he could kind of bounce back next year with a healthy roster, uh, a couple new additions, things like that. Yeah, the, I, I, I echo a lot of the things you guys said too. This is um, a pivotal one for him. They've made some mistakes. They've made some strides here and there, obviously. You know, with Kwesi missing some of those first round picks or, or the first draft uh, class that he had, but then he gets Ivan Pace Jr. as like a UDFA who turns out to be a complete stud. So there yep. are some things that yep. like are, are positive and you can kind of hang your hat on. But at the same time, if they don't fix some of these things sooner rather than later, yeah, I think Kwesi might be the one that they would bail on before they bail on Kevin O'Connell. I mean, Zimmer and Spielman both got axed and, you know, it was out there that Spielman was, was surprised. Zimmer obviously wasn't surprised that he was fired, but you know, these guys are going to go hand in hand to a degree. And then also, I mean, you're just kind of, you're not absolutely uh, assuring yourself of security or long-term security if you don't bring back Kirk Cousins. But if you are able to find and develop the next stud quarterback, I mean, you're extended for a very, very long time. And I don't just don't know how much they want to limit, you know, their earnings or their winnings basically by hedging their bets on bringing back Kirk Cousins and just kind of limiting themselves on their potential of being that, you know, classic seven to nine win team that should be in the mix for a wild card, but is never on the level of, you know, the top teams in, in the yeah. NFC. So wasn't the whole reason for Kevin O'Connell to get a guy like the whole reason. So mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? I'm just waiting for that reason to happen now. Now it's the th going into the third year. I just, you just have to, I just, I, I don't know. I'm convincing myself it's ha they're going to have to pick someone. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and, and touching on that, it's like, and I know Judd just loves to say that, like, Kevin and Quasey were brought here. This is why they were brought here. And I'm starting to wonder, like, yeah. really? Is, is that why they were brought here? Because it seems like the Wilfs just want to get in and see what happens, you know? And it's yep. like, they really should just let Quasey and Kevin take a stab at it. Like, yep. let's move on. Let's try to get a guy that we can draft, develop, and hopefully have our franchise QB for the next 10 plus years. Absolutely. Yeah, this is the, I mean, if they're going to do it, I think this would be the year to try and do it right mm -hmm. with Kirk Cousins, uh, a free agent and they don't sign him obviously by the deadline. And when he becomes an unrestricted free agent, he goes elsewhere. Well, I think we'll obviously very much know what their, what their plans are come draft day. Um, yeah. Bill, before we wrap up, quick shout out to our friends at Nutrisource. Uh, go to NutrisourcePetFoods.com to find a Nutrisource retailer near you to keep your pup happy and healthy and fed appropriately. There's some Chuck and Don's locations here in the Twin Cities. You can just go to NutrisourcePetFoods.com also to uh, to learn more. Uh, before we wrap, boys, I always love to give our audience a, a last take to kind of squeeze in there. Any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, Anthony, how about you, man? I know you're obviously in New York. So, are are you? Is your family, or is your significant others, your boys, or anyone else Vikings fans uh, out just, there, or is I'm, it just you? I think it's just me. Last year, I had my phone off for the playoff game, and I turned it on <laughs> to an abrupt amount of FaceTimes, text messages. Uh, I took one of the most depressing baths of all time after the Vikings loss <laughs> last year. Uh, I hadn't taken a bath in four years before that. Um, I also had the TV. I tr I was able to pick up the remote and turn the TV off before TJ Hawkinson was on the ground, uh, finishing that tackle on the last play of that fourth and nine. Um, but the last thing I'll just say real quick, I just have two things. Uh, one, thank you, Ed Donatel, 
Um, if Ed Donatel was not the worst defensive coordinator in the history of the NFL, I think Kirk already would have been locked up for the next three or four years. So I just I know he catches a lot of flack, but I, I need Vikings fans to give him a little bit more credit. Um, the second thing, uh, Kevin O'Connell, one thing I really like about him is I think, like I said, talked about the culture. I think he is the greatest culture coach to ever exist in NFL history because Nick Mullins was crying after week 18 of the, uh, you know, of a season where he didn't win one game. He was never supposed to take a snap. No Vikings fan ever wanted him to ever play for the Vikings. He's not a part of the future. He's you just go away, Nick Mullins. I hope Josh Dobbs gets a job with NASA and brings Nick Mullins with him into space and they need, <laughs> neither of them ever come back. Uh, and the last thing is, I'm going to put the biggest bet of my life on the Rams money line this weekend. God bless my soul. Thank you. Okay, for I love it. No, I love it. All good stuff. And yet sometimes you just got to, got to wash those sins away, whether that's in the shower or the bath. I, uh, I emphasize with you. That's hilarious, man. I love that. Ryan, how about you, buddy? Uh, any last takes, any shout outs you want to give before we wrap up here on Vikings vent line? Yeah, man. I mean that, that Anthony, that was great. Ed, Ed Donatel should get a lot of credit for that. I'm yeah, I mean, look what the Giants did with Daniel yeah. Jones. That would have been us. It would have been us. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, I hope Daniel Jones sets and Donatel at least like a fruit basket or something <laughs> like <laughs> once a month. But, uh, yeah, no, um, I agree with what she said there. And uh, I just – I really hope they move on from Kirk. Like, it's, it's just time. Like, I, I know I've said it a couple times already, and I feel like I'm repeating myself. But, I mean, we need to upgrade the interior of the offensive line interior the defensive line we got holes at in the in the secondary it's like it's why tie up all these assets when we can re-sign jj re-sign derisaw and then just draft a qb of the future and hunter and, uh, maybe yeah i mean if we could find a way to bring back hunter i'm on board with that man like oh, yeah. he proved himself he's still got a lot left in the tank and he's 29 gonna be 30 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's still got a few years left in him for sure. So I would definitely bring him back. And then awesome. as far as shout outs go, just want to shout out my wife, Krista. She uh, puts up with me a lot and loves watching football, loves the Vikings with me too. And she hears you guys every day. She's always like, dude, you listen to these guys so often. Judd is like my internal monologue. Like, he's <laughs> <laughs> And then oh, I, shout out my girlfriend now. Ryan made me look bad. So shout out, shout out, Allie. <laughs> Love you. And then of course I got to shout out my my two daughters too, uh, Kyra and Haven. So those are my little Vikings fans too. And wild little side note: so my my ten year old, the first three games after she was born, the Vikings went one one and one, and they tied against the Packers. That's right. Yeah. And then Haven, my five year old. The first three games she was born, one, one, and one tied the Packers. <laughs> like, what are the chances of that? Yeah, dude, that's wild. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, and at, at first, at my firstborn, I was like, oh my god, she's gonna be like the baby of destiny. Like, the Vikings are gonna <laughs> win a Super Bowl. Yeah. And then my second one comes along, and now it's like, this is purple pur- purgatory. Like, we're just yep. stuck. We're average. Yeah, you are you are sipping the purple Kool Aid for better or worse, I guess, uh, over there with with, <laughs> with both those things that have happened. Do you? Um, no, I love that, I, and I love the Judd internal voice, as you guys know. Judd like is in my dreams for whatever <laughs> reasons about all the good and bad things of working with Judd Zolgad. There's not many bad things working with Judd Zolgad, but Judd is always in the internal clock in the internal brain of yours. I feel you guys' pain uh, on that one. Uh, well, fellas, thank you so much for joining Vikings Ventline. I appreciate you guys. Great takes. And again, if anyone wants to get in on a future episode, hit me up. It's vikingsventline at gmail.com. You can hit that subscribe button uh, for daily Vikings entertainment. We'll be back on Monday. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Declan. Thanks, Declan.